discussions about the opioid epidemic and the stats and the reports come out worse every day, more frightening every day. Mm -hmm. To me, I feel in some ways like they're barking up the, and it's not the wrong tree. I mean, a lot, there's a lot of focus on the, I'll call it saving people from overdose and a lot of focus on getting them off the drugs. Right. But the interesting thing to me, and I think you and I are, are in sync about taking responsibility in the beginning and seeing what can be done up front so that you don't have a problem on the end. Exactly. So where is it that most people are getting exposed to opioids in the first place? Right. Well, let's look at the scope yeah. first. 15 million people world, worldwide are addicted to opiates. Only 10% of them are getting adequate treatment for getting off opiates, so 90% of them are just receiving no treatment at all. Do the families and practitioners of those 90% know that they're having a problem? Often not, because people are good at hiding their opioid addiction and um, functioning. So it's a problem, first the person has to admit it's a problem and then they have to get the proper treatment. So they have to jump through some hoops to get this done. So how do people get addicted to opiates? Well, one way is they're learning after the traditional exposure after surgery that the doctor will work, write you for a prescription for some kind of opiate and you will take it and your pain will be gone, but you realize how good it made you feel and you will continue to use it. So that's one way. And that's happened far more often than they had first thought in the 70s and 80s when they didn't see this big problem. And these are surgeries of all kinds. Oh yeah, so exactly. Joint replacement surgeries. Sure. Yeah, all kinds well, of surgeries. It, right. it was, was and is right. typical for doctors just write prescripts scripts right. for opiates and give it to the patient. Right. So the other way people get hooked is if there are X number of opiate pills lying around after surgery that the patient didn't use, a teenager or a family member will suddenly discover how good it made them feel and then they're down that road. So we have the patient, we have whoever is in contact with the patient, and then we have people who just have addictive personalities or in a socioeconomic situation which is drug abusing, so it's, it's all over the map, really. What about also the increasing social acceptance of substance use? Uh -huh. That somehow there seems to be an additional acceptance of people taking whatever, you know, there's jokes about taking Valium for whatever, or taking right. Xanax, right? So that we are in a self-medicating world right. of it's okay right. to medicate our pain away and right. medicate well, our emotions away. Well, that gets back away. to the issue of that right. a pill's going to solve my problem. Well, because of uh, certain economic and social constructs that have happened in, in the West in the past 10 years in terms of lost jobs and the economy, people have turned to substances to ease their pain. So uh, other than alcohol and um, so, so softer drugs such as marijuana, they turn to cocaine, they turn to narcotics to ease their pain, and this is why it's become a bigger problem. Well, and again, I think uh, at the beginning of the food chain is the intolerance of pain. Right. Of any kind, of emotional, of physical, right. whatsoever. And the thing that's interesting, so the latest stats, I think that opioid, opioid use and prescribing was going like this, 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 this. Yes. Recently, it's come off a little bit. Yes. But you know, every doctor you talk to acknowledges that there's an issue, right. and yet somehow, they're still prescribing it, or it's the guy across the street that's prescribing it because your guy isn't. Right. Right. Well, because first of all, unfortunately, doctors are very busy, right. and dealing with your pain, if they're busy surgeons, not that they don't want to take care of your pain, sometimes the easiest thing for them to do is to write you a script of narcotics. So I think with the growing problem, there's more awareness about maybe we need to handle this problem differently. Does the doctor need to ask you more questions? Or again, is it back to the individual? And how much does the individual need to double check? Do I really need that prescription? Right. Right. Is there some other medication right. you can give me other than right. an opioid? Well, it varies right. patient to patient. There are going to be some patients right. who say, I don't want to take opiates under any circumstance. I'm afraid of becoming addictive. That's not really a problem right. for that kind of patient. The other patients are drug seeking. Maybe they've had a prior problem or have a present problem and say, if you don't give me X number of pills for this, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. And the surgeon or doctor becomes so frustrated that he, he or she just finally throws the pills at the patient. So the, 
the doctors need to stand tall too. And they I've do. talked to doctors that get let themselves get bullied right. by their patients. They can. Right. And that's why in uh, certain drug treatment programs the patients have to sign a contract. That you know, if you deviate from this contract, say at a pain mm -hmm. clinic or something, I can't treat you anymore. And that way the doctor establishes the ground rules early and protects himself legally as well. But there are many good actors that are out there too. There are. Right. Yep. So let's talk about what the face of these addicts looks like. And you and I were talking earlier right. that it really, there's no single profile of the opioid No, addict. there isn't. Right. And I've done Suboxone training, which mm -hmm. is the training to get people off of opiates. And what they do in their case studies is show you that it doesn't discriminate in terms of age or race or religion or sex or national origin. It's all over the map that anyone really can be a drug abuser or opiate abuser. So what's, what's your answer? <laughs> what's, if you had a magic wand, uh -huh. what would you be doing, Dr. Well, David Well, public Shearer. awareness right. first. I would have talks like right. this and podcasts like this and outreach like this both to the medical community and to the patient community that if you can at all costs avoid opiates to control your pain, you're best served to do that. That's number one. Number two is to say we understand that you have pain and there are going to be times when you need opiates, but let's see if we can restrict them and use other agents that, as well to kind of come at this in a multimodal approach. So I think education and awareness, like with other yeah. social problems, is a key. Yeah. Well, and I think also connected to the social problems is your own social systems. And right. Again, looking at what's happening in the family, right. in the friendships, and be aware right. of the, the pain, emotional, physical, right. that your family's friends or family are in, right. and provide the support that they need so they're not ending up. Right. But important in, to right. realize is that people are people, and they're right. going to continue to be right. people. and. You know, we're all in this bell-shaped curve. We're going to have people at one end says, don't give me opioids under any circumstances. Right. I'm so afraid of being addicted. And then there's some who are going to accept. And then on the other end of the curve, it's like, i got to have them or I'm going to die. So that's just human nature. Do you have any idea what the cost to the health care system is of the addiction problem? It's in the billions of dollars per year and only growing. So... You know, our, company, our country can't afford to keep having this problem and, uh, you know, we're going to have to get into alternate pain therapies and also getting people off of opiates to solve it. Yeah, it's a big problem. And again, I think most interesting, it's your next door neighbor. I yep. mean, at the face of this addiction problem is everybody. Yep. Scary, but thank you. Okay. If you like what you just saw, do me a favor, share it. The healthcare challenge is really a problem for all of us. And the more we can get this information out and get people taking better care of their health, the healthier we will all be. We have more videos with Dr. Shear as well as his blog, What Your Doctor Isn't Telling You, at our website, bottomlineinc.com.